The Sony HD A3000 is a new addition to Sony's soundbar lineup for 2022 as the entry level 3.1 channel option in their A series range. But with plenty of competition in the soundbar market, is this the best choice for you? Hey guys, Louis here from Smart Home Sounds and we're back with another soundbar video for you all. And after testing it out over the last few weeks, I've got a few thoughts to share with you all on this Sony A3000. Now with an RRP of 599, it sits below their more expensive soundbar options being the HD A5000, HD A7000 and HD A9. I will add that pricing fluctuates, so be sure to check here or the link in the description below for the latest pricing. Now, chances are, if you're looking for an Atmos soundbar around about the 500 pound mark, then you've probably also been looking at the Sonos Beam Gen 2 and maybe the Bose 600. And we've actually just done a comparison on these here, if you'd like to check that video out as well. But I will give you my initial thoughts from testing these all out over the last few weeks a little bit later in the video. Now, as always, if you want to support us, then you can over at smarthomesounds.co.uk. And if you find this video helpful, then please let us know down in the comments below and make sure you guys are subscribed for more content. As always, I like to kick off with the designers. For me, that plays a massive part in my decision when purchasing new audio equipment. So if you're familiar with any of the Sony soundbars, then this design should be one that you're pretty familiar with. The A3000 comes in this black colorway only, and it looks very similar, albeit expectedly smaller and lighter, to the larger A5000 and A7000, and of course, without the upwards firing speakers. Now, personally, I do like the simplistic style of this soundbar. It doesn't have the same flair that other soundbars have, but if you're looking to keep things nice and simple, then this design might be more of your style. Now this size works really well under our 55 inch TV and it has a pretty slim profile, so it's not too intrusive. Of course, if you prefer to, you've also got the option to wall mount this soundbar to sit underneath your TV, should you rather. On closer inspection, you'll notice the A3000 benefits from a number of well-refined textured metals and plastics that combine to offer a nice overall finish. Now, Sony states that the A3000 benefits from the omnidirectional block concept, which sounds interesting. Essentially, the rounded edges have been designed to represent a single solid block, which helps to provide widespreading sound, which of course we'll be testing out and coming back to a little later in the video. Now, the final thing worth noting is that it shows the volume level and your current connection source and a few other notifications on the front here. Personally, I like that you can see the volume level without it encroaching on the screen. Now, some people in the office have said that it feels a little bit dated, but personally, I quite like it. I mean, maybe it'll be a little bit like Marmite, but the good news is you can turn it off if you're not a fan. On the top right hand side of the A3000 is where we find our touch controls, which consist of power, source, Bluetooth, music services, and volume controls. Now you also get a Sony remote included in the box, which I'm sure some people will be very happy to hear about. This offers your typical variety of basic controls, as well as a few modes, including voice mode, which emphasizes and accentuates vocals, and a night mode that balances the audio levels for optimal performance at a lower volume level. Now we'll come back to how effective the sound field setting works in our sound test, but this is supposed to offer atmospheric sound and immersive audio when turned on and a pure speaker sound for music listening when turned off. Oh, and one important point to mention is that if you already own a Sony TV, then you don't need to use this remote as your existing TV remote will control this soundbar. Connections wise, things are pretty straightforward. On the back of the soundbar, you'll find a single HDMI ARC eARC port that you'll use to connect up to your TV, an S center out that allows compatible TVs to act as a center channel, and you also have an optical in if your TV is slightly older as well as a USB slot. Now I will add that we have tested a lot of soundbars and especially when connecting to a TV, this was the quickest and most seamless to get set up. So thanks Sony. Okay, so what about streaming then? Well, we've got Bluetooth 5.0 on board as well as Spotify Connect built in, Chromecast, AirPlay 2 for Apple users out there and a choice of two voice assistants, either Alexa or Google Assistant that you can make use of, which is a nice to have. So just before we jump into the sound test, let's quickly talk about what's going on inside the A3000. 
Now, as this is a 3.1 soundbar, we've got three front speakers, including a dedicated center channel, as well as dual built-in subwoofers. Now, interestingly, the speakers feature what Sony call X-Balance speaker units, which refers to the unique rectangular design of the speakers, which helps to maximize the diaphragm area in order to deliver a punchy bass performance. This design also apparently results in less distortion and greater vocal clarity, which we've been testing out this week. Should you wish to, you can also add to the overall level of immersion with the addition of Sony surrounds and or a subwoofer if you'd like to introduce those to this soundbar setup over time. Now, if you are interested, compatible speakers include the SASW5 or SASW3 subwoofers or SARS5 or SARS3S rear speakers. But those will, of course, set you back a little bit. Now, there are a few pros to adding these, which I'll come back to later. Okay then, on to the bit that you've been waiting for. How does this soundbar sound? Well, we've been testing the A3000 in a variety of different setups in different locations and with a variety of audio content from movies to TV shows, music, and gaming on the PS5. And overall, I think it's fair to say that we've been somewhat impressed. As we know, this soundbar supports Dolby Atmos, DTSX, and also benefits from Vertical Surround Engine, which is essentially designed to simulate 3D audio without the need for in-ceiling or upwards firing speakers, as well as S-Force Pro front surround that virtually reproduces the sound field with audio coming at you from both sides, which in theory creates a cinematic and immersive surround sound without adding additional speakers. But before we go any further and share our thoughts, let's do a quick sound test for you guys to give you a taste of what this soundbar sounds like. Now, the usual disclaimer, as always, guys, that what you hear over YouTube will not be exactly what we're hearing here in the showroom and in our studio. And this is purely to give you guys a taste of how this soundbar sounds. So just before we get into it, I'm setting up for the sound test now, and um, we're actually gonna show you two sound tests. So the first one is going to have the sound field setting on the soundbar turned off. And then the second sound test will have the sound field setting turned on because it does make a really big difference. And I'm hoping that that will translate across nicely in the video. Did you think your dad was the only Mandalorian? Your dad was the only Mandalorian. Now we know that this soundbar lacks dedicated tweeters and dedicated upwards firing drivers, but as far as vocals go, I wasn't disappointed. It's a huge step up from TV audio and ensures that the storyline is clear and very easy to follow. I often think that this can be overlooked, but for me, that's a huge requirement for a soundbar. Another thing that stood out was that the A3000 offers a very solid bass performance and reproduces sound with a fair amount of weight behind it, arguably more so than the likes of the Sonos Beam and Bose 600. Now it's bigger, so we would naturally expect that, but it definitely didn't disappoint. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not a rumble in your chest kind of bass, but from a soundbar alone, it's really good. The overall level of immersion was decent and that sound field setting that we mentioned earlier in the video really helped to dramatically improve the overall oomph of the soundbar, which I'm hoping translated across in the sound test. We've been testing this out for the last week or so with plenty of different movies and content across a wide range of genres and the soundbar was able to deliver the perception of a wider soundstage 
without the need for sideways firing drivers. The soundbar seems to come to life more in the higher volumes for me on the whole. Now, after testing a variety of contrasting scenes from very quiet vocal scenes to full on action sequences, the soundbar was able to follow the action around the screen well, but it was also within these more complicated Atmos scenes where I did find that it started to struggle. It's not that it sounded bad, but I felt that it was finding it difficult to deal with complicated soundscapes with a variety of layers as sounds did appear to get a little bit lost in the chaos. Now, I did also find that when it comes to the mids and the vocals especially, that despite being nice and clear thanks to the additional help of the voice mode, I would argue that the Bose and the Sonos alternatives offer a clearer vocal reproduction. For music, I think this does a good job overall and it handles most genres well. I think you do get a similar thing with more complicated tracks where layers aren't quite as separate and as clean as they could be, but the overall performance is well balanced and again, it gives nice and punchy bass. So when we take everything into consideration, I think it performed well and I'm sure that there will be plenty of people out there who will be very happy with the performance of this soundbar. So we're getting a nice looking soundbar that's very capable of dealing with a variety of content, but what else do we get for our money? Well, as we've already mentioned, if you're currently a Sony TV user, then you'll benefit from a number of features. Firstly, you have to give credit where credit is due. As I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, this soundbar has probably been the easiest to get set up. It's essentially plug in and play. Now, if you're using a different TV manufacturer, then the process might not be as seamless, but we literally plugged it in connected it up to the TV, and it automatically appeared on the Bravia Quick Settings menu. And as mentioned, when paired with a compatible Sony TV, we also get the additional benefits of things like the acoustic center sync. Now, should you wish to add more compatible Sony speakers to the A3000, you'll also be able to take advantage of things like 360 degree spatial sound mapping. Essentially, this uses the built-in microphones in the soundbar to measure the relative height and position of the soundbar and other speakers in the setup. And then this creates multiple virtual speakers by synthesizing sound waves based on positional info. Now this helps to create a listening environment that aims to put you inside the film. And with the support of Atmos and DTSX, we'd love to hear how this sounds. So let us know if you'd like a video on this. One downside is that there are no EQ adjustments on this soundbar. You've got things like that sound field mode and a few other options, but you can't make more specific tweaks. On one hand, it keeps things nice and simple, but for those of us who prefer to personalize it a little bit to suit our space, that is a bit of a shame. So what do we make of the Sony A3000? Well, for me personally, I think it's a really solid option for those of you out there who don't currently own a soundbar and are looking to upgrade to a no frills, Dolby Atmos soundbar, or are simply after something that's going to elevate your TV audio to the next level. And of course, offer you another great option for streaming your favorite tracks to. If ease of use is a priority, or perhaps you already own a Sony TV, and just want something that's gonna make your movies and your music more immersive, then this might be the one for you. For me personally, I'm tempted to get this for my parents for Christmas for the ease of use alone. I'm sure you guys out there can relate to having endless phone calls over tech that apparently doesn't work. However, before you jump ahead and order one in time for Christmas, I think you also need to consider what else is on the market for in and around that 500 pound mark. The absence of upwards firing drivers is something you might want to consider, which you get on the Bose 600, for example. And to be honest, it's something that we were hoping for at this price point. Now we've also already mentioned the Sonos Beam in this video, which is another strong contender at a similar price point, offering access to a wider ecosystem. Ultimately, I think your decision will come down to what you're looking for in a soundbar. If you're looking for a no-nonsense bar that does the basics very well and offers great bass and a wide soundstage for your TV, then this might be the one for you. If you've got a few more boxes that you'd like to be ticked, such as a more aesthetic design, access to an ecosystem, or looking for something slightly more refined, then I do think there is plenty of choice at this price point. So do we think this is the best soundbar we've tested at this price range? It's not, but it does tick a lot of boxes and for the right person, this will be a fantastic purchase. So one for the shortlist then, and it's over to you to weigh up whether it's right for your home. But as always guys, let me know down in the comments what you're thinking about the A3000. Thank you all very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.